I am live. I'm live. I am the live. I gotta gotta make stuff work though. Gotta make stuff fucking work. People there already. Cool. <clears throat> Hello. Welcome. Another live stream. Wow. Uh yeah, I know it's late. This is when I'm up. Hello, everybody. I'll probably be up for like two hours um, doing this, I mean. Trying not to uh, let myself go overboard with it, you know? I uh, last time went for almost five hours. Not intentionally. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully I can make live streaming. Um normal enough that people won't feel bad about missing them and feel like they have to stay up every single time uh anyways yeah i'm here to answer anime questions <clears throat> so ask me anime questions only it helps to use the uh the at me feature or whatever the one that makes your thing orange because it's just makes it easier to identify questions as opposed to discussion in the chat um and the first question I'm saying is, what do you think of the possibility of One Punch Man Season 2 not living up to the hype? <clears throat> I don't know. Is there a ton of hype for One Punch Man Season 2? I feel like everyone will be concerned about that, you know? Um, I know there's people who read all of, uh, who've, who've read, you know, all of One Punch Man and think it stays good. So if the, you know, if the anime stays as good as the first season is, I see no reason to think it would be uh, any worse um, if the manga's still good. How do I binge anime? You just fucking, you just gotta, you just gotta keep putting on the next episode. Just don't let yourself stop. Don't, when, when you, the problem I used to have is after each episode, I'd want to take a break. Like, I'd always feel like I just did something and so now I should do something else. The key is to just sit there and never stop you know hitting the next episode just let it auto play if you're on crunchy roll just uh <clears throat> it helps to skip the op and ed if you're in a binge and you don't care about the op and ed of that show skip those and it makes it feel like you're right into the next episode um you know just you just gotta fucking go at it with all your power it's a skill that you you train up over time Thoughts on the rising popularity of all these analysis channels as well as video essay channels? It's not quite a question about anime, but I'd like to see more of those. Uh, I've always been advocating for it. Who's the best girl of the year so far? Of 2017? I have no idea. I have not uh, watched any 2017 shows. It's not a mindless self-indulgence shirt. Actually, it's a Deer Hunter shirt. The Deer Hunter. Um, <clears throat> it came with uh, Act 5, which was sent to me by... Um, by... Uh, uh, Asher, not a poker chip. Anyways, uh, top ten anime of late. Um, not sure what you mean by of late. And also tens a lot. Why do you think Yuri on Ice gets so much hate and gets called queer bait? Because people are, f because people are afraid of gays, I guess. Because it's just gay stigma. I don't know. People are fucking stupid. That's why. Just finished Technolize. Do you have a video on it? Yes, I do. I do have a video on it. It's called uh, The Crushing Nihilistic uh, Something of Technolize. Or maybe just The Crushing Nihilism. I'm not sure. Um, haven't watched Little Witch series yet. Does it live up to the films in your adaptation? I don't know. I haven't watched it either. I don't watch current anime. <laughs> uh, other than Pedantic, Romantic, Demolition D, Under the Scope, and PCP People, what other anime channels do you recommend? Highly recommend Super Eye Patch Wolf. That guy's been crazy active lately and making really good videos. Um, thoughts on Cowboy Bebop? It's one of my uh, one of my old favorites. Haven't rewatched the whole show in a very long time though. Um, but Super Eye Patch Wolf just put out a video about it today. It was pretty good. Um, can you wreck me some good experimental anime? You should check out my 250 anime recommendations video. It's got a whole section for experimental stuff. Second Serial Experiment when? The Second Serial Experiment was the video Useless Anime Knowledge Serial Experiments Lane. I know that's not clear uh, unless you read the description, but there was originally going to be more uh, more to it, but that ended up being it all. Uh, 
can't ask me unrelated but important questions. You have to, it has to be anime questions. <clears throat> what age of viewers do you think Hunter Hunter was meant for? Any any ages between twelve and twenty five? I guess. I mean, eight even. I don't know. It's a fucking shonen manga, so shonen, <laughs> the shonen demographic. Favorite season in the Nanoha franchise is probably Strikers. I think Strikers is the all-around best. It's just got a lot going on, and it's really interesting. Um, are you excited for Konosuba Season 2? Yeah, it, I'm sure it'll be good. Why'd you give Mayoiga a 6? I thought it was pretty bad, because Mayoiga is an, is a comedy show, and a lot of people don't seem to understand that, but that is that is for sure the case. It is intentionally... It's, it's all about fucking with you. Like, the whole show is, like, a weird fake horror anime. I, t I, I talked about it in my video about uh, my finisher fail where I talked about it. There's one with a thumbnail that's actually from that show, so. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's a comedy show, and I think it's funny. That's why. Though I don't think it's so funny that I'd give it above a, a 7. Opinions on the Tatami Galaxy. It's pretty good. It's a pretty fun show. I want an extremely gay anime hentai with a storyline, but not a ton of storyline. Uh, you've got Boku no Pico. I think that fits all of those criteria. Uh, have you checked out more more of Dragon Ball Super now that the dub is airing on Toonami? I have not. Do you have a favorite Sakuga? I assume you mean animator? Which would be Yutaka Nakamura. Um... Go Jesus recently called out a movie reviewer for his shit taste in anime. How do you feel about Western movie reviewers watching and critiquing anime? I'm gonna assume it was like Chris Stuckman because I think that guy's gotten into anime reviews. I think he's the one. Um, I don't know. It's fine. Everyone, everyone can rep like the idea of someone not being able to criticize something because they have shit taste is just ludicrous. You know, it's up to the audience to decide whether or not they agree with you or someone else. Um, I don't know. It's no problem. It's it's not like it affects me somehow that someone else makes anime videos. Is there anything the West can do to change the state of the anime industry despite us not really being the target demographic? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could answer that. I'd buy more anime. Put your money into the shows you care about, I guess. Uh, you currently have a light novel that you want to read, but it's not translated. I don't think so. It's not quite an anime question, is it? A uh, few good horror anime out there. Do you have any favorites? Yes, Shiki and Le Portrait de Petit Cosette are probably my... Uh, and Higurashi no Naku Koro ni. I have a video about my top five favorite horror anime from, uh, like, 2014. I don't think I've seen any new ones since then. Um, I'm realizing that there's going to be a lot of questions that I've already answered in other videos. Do you generally care more about the song or accompanying animations in an OPED? Definitely the song. I mean, I I can't stand most anime uh, OPs and ED music because it's usually just some like generic J-pop or J-rock song, and um, so every when on the rare occasions when there's an anime OP with a song I really like, then that's always something special. Uh, One Punch Man or Mob Psycho 100, which is better? I would probably give it to. Uh, I, I think I'd say I enjoyed One Punch Man a little bit more than Mob Psycho, but they're pretty close. Best anime villain of 2016? I I don't even know. I have no idea. I, I think everyone else would probably answer Yoshikage Kira from uh from JoJo, but I haven't uh haven't watched it yet. Are you excited to destroy SAOS three? I haven't even finished destroying season two yet. I still have not covered the uh, Mother's Rosario arc. Favorite Yu Yu Hakusho art gotta be the Dark Tournament. It's just so fucking great. Uh, most anticipated anime of 2017? I try not to anticipate any. Uh, favorite Deer Hunter album? No, The Deer Hunter is the shirt, not Deer Hunter. That's also not an anime question. Okay, top five anime in the last two months or so. Is that the last two months that I've been watching? Like the last, like the top five I watched in the last two months or top five that aired in the last two months? Um, because the answers would probably be the same because my two favorites of 2016 so far have been Three Gatsu no Lion and uh, 
and uh, Girlish Number, and both of those, you know, were from last season. Um, do I have a favorite anime YouTuber? It's not really an anime question. Thoughts on entirely rotoscoped anime? Could be cool. Haven't, uh, do you think there's still demand for anime blogs, like Ghost Lightning and yourself? I kind of want to get into blogging. Yeah, I mean, uh, Wave Motion Cannon is, you know, doing pretty well. Sakuga Blog. Those are, I, I read both of those. Um, I still read, uh, For Me in Full Bloom. So, I, I mean, I'm reading them. Depends on if you write a good blog, though. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the next Evangelion movie? I hope it's not as shit as 3.33, because that was fucking garbage. What's a good straightforward Yuri anime or manga? Girlfriends. The manga Girlfriends. I remember really enjoying that. It's been a while since I read it. Is Hunter x Hunter still your second favorite anime after a few years? It became my second favorite just recently. Yeah, I would say so. I actually bumped it up the list. I had it below Shirobako for a little bit, uh, and then I bumped it above it just because... I mean, there's just so much in Hunter x Hunter. There's just so much shit. Every time I think about it, it's uh, it's incredible. The crushing nihilistic agony of technology. Oh, I must be way behind the chat if someone's clarifying that uh, there. I'll just skip through and skip a bunch of your questions and get into... Uh, stuff that's happening after I've made more clarifications. Here's like a ton of questions that don't have uh, orange stuff all in a row. Um, should I watch Outlaw Star? I don't know. I don't care about it. Have you watched Love Lab? No. What mic do you use for your videos? That's not an anime question. What's your favorite season in Nanoha? I already answered. Is everything in anime like Monkey says? Junkie says no. I would say no. Uh, do you prefer popular or unpopular anime? I have no preference between those two. I like good anime. Uh, how do you explain anime to people who have no idea what it is, and how do you convince them to understand it as opposed to enjoying it? First, show them my what is anime and what isn't video, and then show them my what is the appeal of anime video. That would be my, my method. Uh... I watched the first episode of Masamune Kun's Revenge. How did you feel about it? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, <clears throat> I, I liked the premise. I liked everything except for the fucking the 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 fucking school uniforms. They have some of the the worst school uniforms I've ever seen. Oh my god, they're just like the most weird clash of colors I I could imagine. Um, but other than that, it's really good. And I, I was doing a video. I was going to have a video series called This Week in An or Anime This Week, uh, and I was going to run this throughout 2017 if I if I managed it, where I would just watch like a bunch of shows that came out that week and then just pick a few ones at random and say whatever thoughts I might have had on it. As a so basically as opposed to the Weebcast where I had to watch every single show, this would be I just comment on whichever ones I have something to say about. Um, and I'd recorded a whole thing of it, and I talked about Masamune Kun and uh, why I liked it and that, but I ended up throwing it away and uh, canceling that series for the time being uh, because of Radcon 2. Have you seen Kokoro Connect? No. Ever going to finish Gundam Thunderbolt? I haven't even started it yet, but I will eventually. Is anime your main source of income? Yes, insofar as this channel is my main source of income, or these my YouTube channels. Uh, it's my only source of income. Favorite female character? Sunimori Akane from Psychopaths. Uh, thoughts on Terror in Resonance? It, uh, that's Zenkyo no Terror? Terrible. Awful show. I've got some videos about it. Most of I, I have one video praising to high heaven the first episode, and then another video absolutely thrashing the show, though that latter one is unlisted, and you can only find it by going through my, like, uh, one of my playlists, or go, go through my every YouTube video featuring Digibro playlist, because, uh, video is not good. <laughs> but that show is still bad. Is Kimi no Nawa overrated? Yeah, I would, I think every Makoto Shinkai movie is overrated, and I'm gonna make a video about it. I'm not gonna call them overrated, but, uh, I will make the case for why I don't, um, well, I'm not the biggest fan, uh, although I do like Kimi no Nawa, though uh, just not as much as other people seem to. What is your favorite Monogatari arc? Uh, probably, um, I don't know, Suruga Monkey or um, the 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 first Hanakawa arc. I don't remember which one it's what what it's called. Uh. Mm. Thoughts on Oyasumi Poon Poon? Haven't read it. 
three favorite romance anime are? That's a good question. The answers would be, in order, Kare Kano, a.k.a. His and Her Circumstances. Uh, number two would probably be Toradora. And... What would be my third romance? Uh, I'm not sure. Those are definitely the top two. I'm trying to think of my third favorite romance anime. I don't know, but you should all watch Katakano and Toradora for sure. I'll, I'll remember the third one later. I'm sure someone will remind me. Why did you drop Silver Spoon? I don't like it. I don't like... Uh, I felt like with Silver Spoon, it felt like it was trying to cram down my throat this idea that like... Uh, you know, that like, yeah, farm life is so fucking cool. You should eat fresh food and animals and, and it, like, like it, it, it really feels like it's, uh, like trying to say that like city life is like dumb and everyone should act like a farmer and shit. Romanticizing. It was romanticizing the, uh, the farm life as something very cool. And I was like, I just felt like it was trying to shove it down my throat and I hate animals entirely. So it doesn't help that I tried to watch it, like, shortly after I'd broken up with my ex-girlfriend who was obsessed with horses, and that show uh, was, like, trying to glamorize horses, and I was just really annoyed with that. If you could have any current anime director direct your favorite manga, which manga would it be, and what director would you choose? My favorite manga is Bakuman, and it already got adapted to anime, though not particularly well. Um, so I guess I'd have them redo Bakuman with uh, the director of Shiro Bako or something. What do you think of Alien 9? It's pretty cool. I've read I've I've read both the manga and watched the anime and they were pretty cool. Opinions on Dororo Enmakun Mera Mera and Re Cutie Honey. It was surprising to see you dropped both. Um yeah, Enmakun I just remember being really stupid and Cutie Honey I just never got around to the rest and I guess I marked it as dropped. Um I don't know why. I only watched Mayo Ego week by week when it was airing. Did you said that only by marathoning it you might understand it better? That's I think every anime that's true of. You will because if you watch stuff week by week, you just lose track of what it is. You lose track of who, you know, who's who, what's going on, what matters, all the little details that uh, that you're supposed to be holding on to. Like it's just so much easier to understand a show and like remain invested in it if you watch it all at once. Uh, will you be analyzing any more trash anime made by A1 Pictures in the future? Probably. I'm sure I will get back to it. The, the, the thing is about writing about shit shows is that, like, I have to pick battles that I feel like are worth fighting. Like, with Sword Art Online, that was obviously a really big deal of a show, and people really wanted to hear my opinions on it, so I, I unleashed. Um, and with the Asterisk War, it was about taking down this whole genre, this whole light novel shit genre, and the show was also doing fairly well. Um, so it felt like a noble cause. But, like, if I were to just take some random shit anime and, you know, go in on it, then it it feels kind of pointless. Like, I mean, it would be fun, I'm sure, and people would get into it. Like, you know, YMS... Uh, does plenty of stuff like that, you know, but my favorite YMS videos are the ones where he's doing a pointed takedown of something and YMS is what, you know, he, he was the one who inspired the, the sort of the line, your anime sucks in the first place. So, you know, I, I really prefer it if I have like a, a meaning behind taking down this particular bad anime and there haven't been any that I felt like, uh, I wanted to do that for lately. Unless it was, like, erased or something. But then that would just piss everybody off. <laughs> because people already were mad at my fucking review of that show. Um, are you planning to watch the new Yu-Gi-Oh! movie while it's still in theaters? I didn't even know there was one in theaters. Or Ghost in the Shell next week. I'm definitely not going to see the live-action Ghost in the Shell. It looks terrible. Uh, most recommendable Shonen series? Hunter x Hunter. That's by far... Thoughts on Flowers of Evil? I've only seen the first episode. Thoughts on Mamoru Hosoda? He's pretty cool. I really love Summer Wars. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, and One Piece Movie 6 is really good. I I like Girl Who Let Through Time and Wolf Children, but not nearly as much as everybody else. Um, but I do want to rewatch them both. I haven't seen them in a long time. And uh, I still haven't seen The Boy and the Beast. Uh, thoughts on Legend of Legendary Heroes? I did not watch it. Uh, thoughts on Spice and Wolf? It's good. It's a good show. I really like. You guys should ask me more specific questions, probably. 
Ucho, Kinte, uh, Ucho Tenkazu, who I still haven't watched yet. Do anime studios care about foreign fan base? I don't... I, I mean, they do, but... Uh, I don't know. I think they have a lot of misinformation about us. Like at at uh, at the PA Works panel at Otakon, um, the 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 they had the president of PA Works there along with uh, a couple producers, and he was telling the audience like that he was shocked that Shirobako had sold uh, somewhat, you know, in the U.S. And he was asking like because I guess. He, he was explaining that the way it's thought of in Japan is that if you want to get the Western audience, you have to make something flashy. That, like, that that American fans only care about, like, action and, and flashy animation and stuff like that. And so he was asking us, like, what do you guys really look for? Is this the case? And, of course, everyone in the audience told him, well, what we care about is relatable characters. And the reason we like Shirobako is because it's about, you know, the, a, a good human drama. And he was he was kind of like... He had this expression like, that's what I thought, you know, like, yeah, of course that's the case, but that's just not how it's thought of in their, uh, in their industry. They, you know, because historically only the big action shonens and stuff uh, get big here. Uh, what's your favorite shonen manga, if any? Uh, hmm, manga. One Piece, probably. Uh, if we're talking about, like, major mainstream shonen manga. What do I think about Shin Godzilla? It was pretty great. It's not anime, though. If you could have a power, what would you have? I don't know. Uh, what do I think of Nobuna Gun? I dropped it after like an episode and a half. It seemed bad. Mm. Do you have a video on how to be an anime analysis YouTuber? I've, I've got a bunch of videos explaining my process and just general thoughts on my work, so... I don't know, track track those down, I guess. What's the best way to make a Magical Girl YouTube channel? Uh, oh, man. Make some videos about Magical Girl stuff, I guess. Make it very pink and cool. Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd probably sub a Magical Girl YouTube channel. Unless, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you mean like a review or analysis channel. Now that I think about it, you never mentioned that. You just said a Magical Girl YouTube channel, so I don't entirely know what that means. Um... Could you elaborate on what you think about JoJo and what you've seen of it? JoJo is... I have a weird relationship with JoJo because I feel like the appeal of JoJo is very clear and obvious. Like, it's it's a fucking weird-ass show about crazy masculine dudes fighting and beating the shit out of each other. And I think it's really fun and cool, and I especially love the idea that it takes place over all these generations and that each arc is like has its own personality. Um, but... But, like, I th I feel like other people feel ways about JoJo that I don't understand. Like, to me, it's just, like, a fun, wacky, uh, like, scatological comedy show um, that's just there to be, like, uh, like, hilarious and stupid. But the way people get so down for JoJo, I'm just like, I don't, I don't get... I don't get being like that into it. I guess I guess for a lot of people it just really resonates with them. Like that style of humor and and action just uh just gets their attention. But the way people talk about JoJo like it's the best thing that's ever happened in the universe, I'm always a little surprised, especially because of like what people enjoy it, you know? Like to me it's it's not that different from any other shonen action series in that it's like I mean it's fucking stupid. There's, uh, it, it's funny whenever I talk about JoJo, I always bring up the scatological element and people always look at me funny. Like they don't think about that. Like most people don't think of the fact that there's literally shit jokes in like half of all the episodes. Like how many times do you see like some dog take a shit on somebody or something like that? Or like someone have to put their face in the toilet. Like it happens constantly. And yet like it doesn't get talked about much. People bring up the stands and the powers and like. I'm always sitting here like, you guys remember that th this is the show with the poop, right? The constant poop. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'm focusing on the wrong things. But I think it's a fun show. Uh, I hope that answered the question. Um, thoughts on Neto Rade. I don't get why it bothers people so much, to be perfectly honest. Uh, ever think you're going to stop doing the anime thing? I don't know. I've been doing it for so long, I don't know what else I could do. 
Uh, will I be watching the Zare Goto series? Probably. I have the first episode downloaded. I just haven't seen it yet. I've read the first book and like half of the sick one. Did I hear about Studio Trigger considering a Patreon? Yes, I did. And I'm I'm very excited about it in concept because I've been saying for a while that I want the um, I want uh, Japanese studios and stuff to start doing that to give us a way to just pay them directly. Um, and I think that's a that's an incredible idea, especially for a, a group like Trigger, who's like so tightly knit and has such a clear identity that like you know exactly what you're getting if you give them money. Um, although I'm not sure how I feel about it actually being Patreon because I do I have a I have issues with Patreon and I really want Patreon to start having competition and I'd love it with with a company like that. I feel like there should be some way for them to set up that kind of donation system without having to go through Patreon. But I don't know, maybe it's harder than I think, or maybe they just want to do it the you know, the easy and established way. But uh, Patreon needs some competition. It's not the best run uh, website. Um, this question, has a fan base ever ruined an anime for you? Uh, no, I don't think that's ever happened, and I don't think it should. I think it's kind of embarrassing when people say that an, a fan base ruined a show for them. Um... I've been talking quite a bit about Index lately, like during the PCP decompression a couple weeks ago. Do I plan on talking more about it or finishing it soon? Uh, not really. <laughs> it's just an interesting case study example, but I don't know if I have any plans to talk about it at length. Am I afraid of anime? Absolutely. Anime is terrifying. I've never watched any of K-On, but I heard you really like it. What are your favorite things about it? Go watch my video, K-On, A Loving Thesis, where I go for an hour and a half about why K-On's good. Uh, my thoughts on Veroni Kenshin anime. Um, I started to talk about this on the last live stream, but I didn't end up saying much. Veroni Kenshin, um, when I was like 12, it was my favorite show, and I was like way obsessively into it. I had a birthday cake of uh, of Hajime Saito doing his Akusoku Zan pose. Um, I don't remember the name of the actual attack, and I I uh, I think I even made I think I even made like a Geo Cities fan site dedicated to Saito Sojiro, even though I never even really made it to a lot of his episodes uh, when they changed the time slot. But um, yeah, I was way into Veroni Kenshin and the Samurai X OVAs, and. Um, just because it was a badass action series with fucking swords and shit. But as I've grown up, I have a weird relationship with it because the anime, I feel like, is better than the manga. I feel like it has more heart. In spite, in, uh, disregarding the final arc, like, when I read the manga, I think I read, like, five volumes of it, and the the artwork is all very, like... Uh, kind of stale. It's not. It doesn't have the best artwork. And if you read the like the the notations that the author Watts, Nobuhiro Watsuki does after each chapter, it's almost always like, "My editor said this would be a good idea, so I did it." Like nearly every idea in the manga is like something his editor suggested, and he put it in. And like even you know like the whole Shishio arc was just concocted when the editors were like, "Yeah, you need a big villain," and he was like, "Okay," you know. I mean, granted, he still delivered on, like, you know, some creative ideas, but I feel like the anime series imbued the whole thing with more life. Like, it felt like the people who made it cared more about the material than the actual author did. And, um, but at the same time, it's, uh, you know, an absurdly long, uh, shonen adaptation show with a lot of filler and a lot of boring shit that just doesn't need to be there. And, uh, you know, changes to the source material that maybe were not always for the best. So, yeah, like, I'm divided about it, but, uh, you know, the Tsuyoku Hen OVA is still amazing, and the new movies, the live action movies, are pretty fucking cool. Um, so, yeah, I still have, I still have a relationship with Kenshin, but it's, it's complicated. Have you heard about Lovely Complex? It's a rom com I really like. Yeah, I think I've seen the first four or five episodes of that it's odd i enjoy it but i don't i'm not like that into it i just i think it's i think it's a good show but um i haven't gotten into it enough to finish it and it, i was trying to watch it towards the end of me binging uh anime rom-coms uh, a couple like a year and a half ago or whatever whenever i did that video um why only have anime questions forgive the non-anime question uh because i just want to talk about anime right now um if I didn't want to get into anime, how do I get into music? It's not an anime question. That's like the opposite. Favorite crystal gem? Not anime. 
Do I have a genre of anime that I prefer? Uh, not in like I don't I don't think that there's any genre that I like um, that I'm like absolutely into above others. But definitely cyberpunk is where the most of my uh, like favorites gravitate towards. Um, can I talk about Seiko no Quasar and why it is awesome? You recommended it, but I've never heard you talk about it in detail. Quasar is awesome for very similar reasons to JoJo, but if you like uh, perverted fan service bullshit, and uh, it's just that it, it's it's way over the top and ridiculous. But um, okay, it's a, I mean it's a series about a bunch of people who are who kind of have power similar to Full Metal Alchemist. Each of them can do like some they can manipulate some uh certain element either from the elemental table uh the main character of course does iron because why wouldn't he um but yeah so but each of them in order to use their powers has to have something called soma and soma is in breast milk so they have to drink breast milk in order to use their powers and so much of the show is about them you know just like a bunch of fucking fighters sucking on tits and then fighting each other. And like, it goes so far above and beyond with the sexuality. Like it pushes it to the limits of what is acceptable on television. In fact, I'm not sure how a lot, especially in season two, how the fuck they got it on the TV. Cause it's basically porn by season two. Um, but the plot is like, you know, like Nazis come back and there's like, there's, uh, heavy, uh, Christian, uh, symbolism and like, it's just, it's just throwing in like every B movie cliche into a mix, but doing it all with, with a very anime slant and, uh, and just this over the top sexuality that I think is really hilarious and fun. And, um... And yeah, it's just awesome. It's just a cool, fun time that uh, that I really like. Uh, but I understand why a lot of people can't can't handle it. Who's got the best tits in anime? My stock answer is Haruhi, um, but I don't know. I'd have to really, I don't know, because lately I've been, you know, I, I I always said Haruhi before, but my only problem with the the designs in that show is that the boobs are are too high up. There's no drag on them at all. They're all like right up here, you know. Got to be a little, got to be a little sag to them to have uh, perfect, perfect tits. So I'll get back to you on. I'll get back to you in May. Let's just say that. Mm. When are you gonna do the Gundam binge? Been waiting. Uh, when I fucking have time, <laughs> which could be could be never. Hopefully this year. I'd really like to cover Gundam this year. Outlaw Star or Cowboy Bebop? Cowboy Bebop by far. Outlaw Star is not that good. It's overrated. It's it's uh, it's blown out of proportion by nostalgia, I think. Where do you watch your anime? Wherever I can find it. Preferably streaming because I'm too lazy to wait for downloads. Are you going to make a video breaking down everything wrong with SAO movie a la your SAO 2 videos and they come out in theaters? I don't know. It really depends on how how big the demand is, how much I care, how much I want to do it. I'm currently reading the Sword Art Online progressive novels, so I'm still in the mindset of trying to cover SAO on some level. Um, so we'll see. On a scale of 9 to 10, how awesome is Kuzuno Honkai? I haven't seen it. I don't watch current anime. Anything in your particular looking forward to this winter season besides Konosuba Season 2? No, not really. Uh, do you consider the Chinese anime to be anime and why? I really wouldn't, um, but it's we it's it, it kind of pisses me off that my anime list is so willing to put all the Chinese anime on there, but they won't put on, like, uh... Like, like they won't even put on Thunderbolt Fantasy, which is, like, basically anime, except that it's with puppets. They won't put on, like, uh, you know, American anime-styled stuff. Like, they, they have such a to-do about the fact that they won't put Avatar The Last Airbender on there, just because it's not from Japan. But then they'll put in all these Chinese shows. And it's like, well, what, what, what are the rules then, you know? Is it just that because there's Japanese companies involved with the Chinese shows, is that enough to make it anime? Or that it broadcasts on Japanese television, which I'm sure Avatar has done too? I don't know. If we're gonna start if we're just gonna start calling that anime, let's just call everything anime, you know? Let's be consistent. 
If that's anime, then so is every other fucking cartoon. Um, what JoJo arcs did one introduce a beginner to? The first one, always the first one. Well, I don't know why you would, why you would skip ahead. It's just going to be confusing. Uh, now that it's on Crunchyroll, do you intend to watch Giant Gorg anytime soon? Since you finish up those shows for your shaft, I might watch it sometime soon. I remember enjoying the first two episodes like way the fuck back. I think I watched them dubbed, actually. <laughs> um, who's the best new girl from 2016? What does that mean, best new girl? As opposed to, well, the answer is Chitose. Chitose from Girlish Number is my best girl of 2016. She is fucking perfect. Uh, mm, mm, have I seen the Madoka concept trailer? I don't think so. What do I think of Macross Frontier? All the songs are extremely great. Not that into the songs from Macross Frontier. I, you know, um, I, I have, I have a sort of meme that, uh, that, that, uh, Yoko Kano. I call her the bass queen. Because she puts tons and tons of bass, like bass guitar, into her songs. Like she, she puts the bass very prominent in the mix compared to like any other musician, and uh, it's particularly weird in her pop songs, like in Macross Frontier, because they have the, these these like really noodly prominent bass lines that that kind of are like not what you would expect from pop music at all, um, and just those songs are so like every song in Macross Frontier is like weird as shit. They all have like. Uh, like they're they're kind of jarring. They go all over the place, and I don't know. I'm I'm not a not a fan of the music. Uh, I've only seen the first couple of episodes of the anime, uh, and I will probably watch more eventually. How did I skip so far ahead in the chat all at once? What happened? Um, I don't I don't know what the fuck happened here. Um, for your shaft videos, will you have to vu Reddit your or redo redo your Monogatari video, make a new one, or not do anything with it? I'm not sure yet. I would probably I I am definitely considering um having to vu remake a bunch of my old videos. Like there's certain ones that deserve to exist again and will never get attention or are just like ugly, you know, because there's no video for them. And Monogatari is one of the ones I've thought about that with, but there are a lot of things that could be changed about it, like a lot of clarifications that could be made. So, um, so I don't know, but I do really like that video, so I'd like it to continue existing, um, and I will eventually cover the rest of Monogatari, though that's not really part of the Shaft series, per se. Uh, should I watch Kenya Boy Under the Influence? In the same breath, have you heard of Popey the Performer? I know Munchies watched it, surprisingly. Wow, Munchies watched Popey, huh? I know, I'm very aware of Popey, I haven't watched it yet. Uh, Kenya Boy, absolutely, you should watch that, especially if you're on some kind of hard drugs. That would probably be the best way. Because you will see things in there that you're not sure if they're real or not. If you're on a, if you're on those kind, like if you're uh, high on something. Uh, favorite anime gift to send to people as a response. Unfortunately, I'm not into the whole uh, uh, sending gifts thing. I should be though. It's just too much effort for me. What do you think are the advantages to watching anime in a marathon style over watching on a weekly basis? Everything everything's better that way that's how you should watch everything thoughts on steins gate i love it it's one of my favorite shows haven't seen it in six years why is negima an idiot i don't know uh if you had the time and the money would you ever consider creating a cartoon with anime influence akin to avatar the last airbender probably not um no if i wanted to make an anime as a producer i'd just go to japan and hire the people i like to make the to make it when are you going to rewatch classics like Utena, Bebop, and FLCO so we can see where you would rank them? That's a great question. I don't know. I don't know. When will I have time? The problem with those shows is that, and with this is why I don't rewatch a lot of old stuff, is that, like, in order to justify watching a show, I feel like I have to make a video out of it. You know, like, I can't bring myself to, to, uh, to like watch anything unless I think I can make a video and so with a lot of these shows I want to rewatch it's like on the one hand I think oh man that's one of my old favorites but then I'm afraid I'm gonna rewatch it and like it's just gonna be like a totally different feeling and I'm not gonna be sure what to do you know I don't know I've got a I've got a weird hang up about a, about a lot of old favorites where it's like I'm afraid of revisiting them and finding out how my opinions have changed you know um 
which is funny because I've made like three Cowboy Bebop videos without rewatching the show. Uh, like I did, you're going to carry that weight, which was justifiable because it was about memories and about remembering things about a show. Uh, and then I had the, the, the one about the character designer, Toshihiro Kawamoto, uh, where I, you know, I just kind of talked about all the shows in a general sense and didn't even bother, uh, rewatching Bebop for that. So yeah. Um, why does Log Horizon feel so inconsistent? Why does it appear as a fantasy adventure show for the first five episodes and switch to politics and go to a trying onto a triangle drama? I don't know if it's inconsistent. It's just broadening. It's it's each arc is a bigger a bigger uh, problem than the previous arc. You know, the first arc is just about sort of getting you into the heads of what it's like to be in this world. You know, they've all been they've all been trapped in this RPG. Let's explore the mechanics. Let's figure out what that means for the characters. And then from there, we can open up into a bigger story. But the seeds for that are planted from the beginning. You know, from the very start, we see how all the people in Akihabara are are distraught and all these, uh, you know, these ideas that, like, we're going to explore the systems of this game. And then we do in the later arcs. Um, Honestly, I do think the the light novels do a slightly better job of letting you in on the fact that it's going to broaden out, um, but, you know, uh, that's what makes the show good. Thoughts on Leiji Matsumoto? I haven't really consumed any of his stuff at length, so I don't have any uh, firm thoughts about him. But if you're a fan of Leiji Matsumoto, I highly recommend the blog animecritique.wordpress.com. That's K-R-I-T-I-K critique um he was a very diehard La- leiji matsumoto guy who wrote like hundreds of posts about uh leiji matsumoto um why do you avoid talking about ruby because it's not anime and it sucks I, and i hate it <laughs> when are you gonna make your own anime probably never uh, uh thoughts on hajime no ipo it's really good and one day i'll finish it i'm about 15 episodes in it's Hajime no Ippo is a show that's like all of my friend, like all of my offline friends. It's like their favorite anime. Like my my friend uh, Don San, he had watched the show with like my cousin and my brother Victor, and they all marathoned it and just thought it was the greatest thing ever. And um, they've all kept up with it. But I I skipped out on that marathon, so I've only been slowly playing catch up. But uh, one day I'll finish it. Have you watched Princess Arete? It's probably the best example of an engaging story with the themes of bathos. I have not. I don't know anything about it, actually. Have you ever thought about making a video about how to get people into anime where you clarify the misconceptions most people have against anime and what th- where they should start? Um, I don't know. I don't know what misconceptions people have exactly. Like, I mean, th- that seems like it could be different from person to person. Um, so it would be hard to clarify all those things. And where they should start is – that's a – quite a difficult question it really depends on what they're coming to anime for like everyone's always trying to find the like the keystone this is how you get somebody into anime show but really it's a matter of like what do they want from anime you know do you want to watch anime because it can have like do you you just want it to be the same thing as your live action tv like are you just looking for shows that are that are good in the same way as regular shows because if so just watch the stuff on Netflix. Just watch Attack on Titan. You know, you're going to get your fix of of that kind of, uh, you know, drama. But if you want anime because it's different from Western TV, then it's about, like, what do you want from it? Um, so, yeah, that's why I think there, there is no just easy answer to that. Favorite Monogatari arc? I already answered that. Uh, am I going to get back to Stella no Maho before you... D- I, I forgot I was supposed to do that before I... Uh, before the end of the last video, before the end of the last finish or fail, I was supposed to finish Stella no Maho and I didn't. Um, so yeah, thanks for reminding me. That's important. <laughs> uh, you ever see the Dot Hack series? Yes, I watched Dot Hack Sign way back in the day when I was a wee lad, and I've also seen a. I've I've, I've consumed a lot of Dot Hack, a lot of different parts of it, but not all of them. Um, I don't recommend it in any way. What are some fantasy anime that have an interesting world that care about and don't break their internal logic? Um, I don't, I don't know exactly what you're looking for, but going by the tone of your question, I will say the Twelve Kingdoms is probably a good one. Or, yeah, that's like a serious sci-fi, I mean, it's serious fantasy anime. Um, it's like political and shit. Although I haven't, I haven't watched that much of it, so I cannot confirm that it's actually 
what you're looking for. Uh, are you going to try to see Kimi no Nawa in theaters? Maybe if it comes like close to me, which most anime doesn't. Um, will you still do the Ava analysis with all the anime channels? No, that is long dead of an idea. Just watch Kodomo no Jikan. Thanks for the recommendation on the last stream. Uh, you're welcome, even though I didn't exactly recommend it, but... <laughs> Uh, shave your fucking beard, you fucking asshole. No, fuck you. Eat a dick and go die. Uh, best lolly in anime. Um, I kind of answered this in the last live stream with Sana Karada from Kodocha, even though she's not really what you think of when you think of a lolly. She's just a, like a little girl, but she's one of my favorite anime characters. Um, favorite song used in Yuri on Ice? I don't know. Uh, they're all fun. None of them is like anything I would ever listen to, but they're fun in the context of the show. Have you fapped to any character from Flying Witch? Of course, all of them. Are you kidding me? That sh they're all fucking hot. Why would you not? Um, I haven't watched Tanya of the Evil. I don't watch current anime. Uh, thoughts on Spice and Wolf? It was cool. It was a good show. Uh, I watched it a long time ago, so I don't remember it uh, too well. Best anime to cure a headache? Mm, Oki Ichi Nensei to Chisana Ni Nensei. That might be a great little relaxing headache cure. Possibly My Neighbor Totoro. Um, those, I've never tried using anime to cure a headache, though I do. I have historically used the soundtrack of the first Kata no Kyokai movie as a way to help me deal with headaches. So uh, that could work too. Um, a video on why 91 days is popular i don't know why 91 days is popular i mean other than the obvious reason that it's like a like a gangster western kind of show uh aqua or megumim uh aqua aqua's best girl in konosuba how are the sao progressive novels so far i'm only like 50 pages into the first book and it's it's definitely an improvement in that it start like it it cuts out most of the exposition that's in the first episode and uh it starts off with kirito and asuna meeting and it like immediately goes into way more detail about asuna than it did originally and you get the sense that the series is about them about their relationship and their bond and it will always be about them and that's the sense i'm getting which i like on the other hand it still has the problem of it's just fucking boring like Kawahara just focuses on things that you can't possibly care about in way too much detail. Like they're about to, I'm, I'm, they're, they're like building up to the raid that they do, you know, in the in episode two, and like, they're just, it's just so much build up going into so many details about like how raids work and who's gonna do what and how much HP the boss has, and it's just like all this detail that really doesn't matter and it's super uninteresting, um, and I'm just like. Because that, the book is thick. The first progressive book is thick, and it does not need to be thick. It could definitely have been cut uh, for content. Um, but so far, it's better than the show. Horror gore anime that I recommend? Uh, I don't know. I'm not big into that genre, so you'd probably just look, just fucking Google it. Um, you talked about how much template characters there are in anime. What do you think is the most complex anime character? most complex I mean Char Aznable is a tempting choice from Gundam because he just he exists throughout like 15 years of different anime shows and his character changes in such bizarre and interesting ways over the course of that time most complex uh Misato from Evangelion is pretty fucking complex of a character. Um, I'm looking around at my stuff. I guess Char. I mean, I, I really, I really think Char is the ultimate anime character in every way, and I'm gonna get into it one of these fucking days. If anyone just wants like the basic version of what, like I, I know I've brought up this Char thing all the time, and people are always like waiting for it. I talked about most of the reasons why he's interesting on an episode of Digibro and Friends, which is my, like, you know, my offshoot Let's Play show on the Digibros channel. And it was in episode 
64, I think, of Star Fox. We played Star Fox 64. You can find an episode that has Char in the title. And I detailed a lot of, like, the basics of why Char is cool in that. So if anyone just wants to fucking hear me go on about it for once. Um, but I don't want to talk about it too much. Am I caught up or at least semi-caught up in the One Piece manga? No. No. Not even close. Favorite characters from Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter? Oh, that's a good one. Um... Yu Yu Hakusho is y Yusuke Urameshi. I absolutely love him. I think he's one of the strongest uh, anime protagonists out there because he has such a definitive arc over the course of the show without ever without ever losing track of what makes him cool and fun in the first place. That he's like kind of a, you know, he's kind of an asshole. He's kind of a sarcastic uh, punk, but he's also, you know, he's got a heart of gold. He's, he's, he's a good guy who's just constantly having to deal with bullshit. You know, and it's like understandable that he's got an attitude about it because so much of what he has to put up with is so annoying. And his arc is all about like, like sort of in the early part of the show, he feels like, well, if everyone treats me like shit, why should I have to do anything? Why should I have to do something for them when they, you know, when everyone's taking away from me? And his arc is about realizing that he should work anyways, that like he should, he should try and he should, uh, uh, you know, better himself for his own sake and, um, and for the sake of helping others. So, you know, that's, the, that's the major arc he undergoes over the course of the show. And you really see him grow as a person, even though he still remains the good old Yusuke Urameshi, you know, and he's, he's such a tortured character where like the stuff that's wrong in his life is all very real. It's all very relatable that like his mom's a fucking drunk, uh, you know, the, the teachers don't like him at school. He has to get into fucking fights and he doesn't want to deal with any of it, you know. Um, as for Hunter Hunter, uh, Kilo is really great. He's really the heart and soul of the show. Um, and of course, fucking uh, Hisoka is always a joy to watch. Um... I don't know if I have a favorite character in Hunter x Hunter. I'm trying to run through all of them in my head. It's probably easiest to say Kilua. I mean, he also has the clearest arc in that show. Um, and I really love the, the girl with the glasses and the vacuum. I don't remember her name, but she is waifu material. So yeah, I guess I'll say... I guess I'll say Kilua. So he's everybody's favorite, so it's not... Top five anime girls you would fuck. Uh... Stick around. I'll I'll answer that in in the future, at some point. <laughs> Does enjoying Lollicon make me a weirdo? I don't think so. Well, I mean, it, yes, it makes you a weirdo, but being a weirdo is not a bad thing. <laughs> uh, what episode did you give up on Shinsekai Yori? At what part of the story? I rewatched some of it and still found it to be remarkably well crafted. I dropped it after episode four. I hate the first four episodes so much. I look. I'm gonna watch Shinsekai Yori eventually. People ask me about it fucking constantly. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to do it just so I can fucking talk about it. Just so I can get to the end and say, like, maybe I'll end up liking it, but I just want to be able to say, okay, I gave it the second chance, and here I am, you know, here's how I feel now that I fucking wasted another 18 episodes watching this shit that I absolutely hated and reviled after the first four. Um... And then maybe I'll make something about it. You know what I... And part of the reason I want to do that is because I also want to compare it to the manga. Because I flipped through some of the manga in the store. And the manga is a totally different take on the material. Because they're both adapted from a novel. The manga is, like, really fan service heavy. And has, like, tons of tits and, like, basically, like, full-blown lesbian sex scenes. And I was like... This seems more my speed than the anime. So the anime to me just feels really pretentious and like, uh, like kind of up its own ass. Whereas the manga seems like a fun time. So uh, I'd like to compare those at some point. Uh, anyway, thoughts on Melancholy of Haruhi Zumi? It changed over time compared to other anime you're watching now. I I will uh, I will answer that question when I finally rewatch Haruhi. I haven't watched it in a long time. Um, are there any good harem shows that you like? Yes. Uh, I like Kanokon. It's not amazing, but it's... I like Kanokon because all the girls are so fucking down. Like, to me, the best thing... Like, the best harem shows are the ones where, like, like the girls are the perverted ones. You know, not the guy. Or, like, like that the scenarios 
are all like at will. Like every all the girls in Kanokon just really want to fuck the main guy. And like he is resistant to it, but he obviously wants it. So it's like, it's all mutual. Everyone just wants to fuck in that show. And they basically do. The show is borderline porn. Um, so it's a fun time. And the just, yeah, I, I like, I think uh, I'd enjoy harems more if it was less like girls accidentally falling on guys and like all the weird like groping and like, uh, you know, accident, accidental molestation scenes and more of like just girls wanting the D, you know, I think that's a lot more entertaining. I was hearing some weird noises from outside. It was distracting me while I was talking about that. Um, favorite One Piece arc. I'm not really far enough in One Piece to give a favorite arc. Uh, am I going to make a video about Three Gods and a Lion once I've finished watching it? You know, now that you mention it, I had thought about making a video of it just based on what I've seen so far. Um, I forgot that it's not over and that maybe I'll have more to say when it's over. So, yes, maybe, maybe I will. That's not a bad idea. Um, how long would it take to name every single reference from Daikon 4 in a video? I don't know. Why would you, uh, why would you want to just sit around all day naming references? References are only funny if you get them, really. Um, hey, TG, what's your thoughts on Sword Art Online? Uh, it's not good. <laughs> or it's shit. It's not good. As I once answered, uh, I answered these opinions on two Kizumonogatari films and where they stand in the mindless indulgence shops. Haven't watched them yet. I have not watched anything past the second season of Monogatari, uh, or no, anything past Hana Monogatari. I have not watched anything beyond that. Favorite anime OP. It's a difficult question because it's 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 different if you're asking about just the song or the song and video in combination. Because if it's song and video in combination, my number one is probably the th well. There's a few that I would I would nominate. The third, Eureka Seven OP, which is Taiyo no Manaka A, um, just has a really incredible emotional video. I think I actually cried watching that OP once. And, uh, and it's got an awesome song. The F, A Tale of Memories OP, I cried during the last episode version of it because they changed the OP subtly and, uh, in a way that was really emotional. Um, and, uh, the fucking Samurai Champloo opening, both visually and audio perfect. Directed by Mamoru Hosoda, incidentally. I was talking about him earlier. Um, probably my favorite thing he's done. The Samurai Champloo opening. Um... Yeah, so those those would be like my audio and video examples. My favorite anime song OP would either be The Soul Taker, uh, which is just a classic and it's been I've been a fan of it for like 15 years and I saw it live on my birthday when I was 17. It's a magical experience. And uh, the OP to Denpa Onato Seishun Otoko, which is uh, um, the, the song that introduced me to the band Shinsei Kamate-chan, which is one of my favorite bands, and it's just a fantastic song. So, yeah. Those are probably my favorite anime songs. Oh, shit. I accidentally scrolled down the wrong way. Oh, Jesus. There's a thousand million questions. This will never end. I'm gonna try to find ones I really like. Uh... Shizuku was the glasses girl in uh, Hunter x Hunter. Uh... Why are studios abandoning long-running series for shorter series? Does it seem like good business move considering they need to make a f new show from scratch, design themes, etc.? Well, if a show's... If, if you make a show and you plan it to be long and then it immediately tanks, then you're fucked. So it's a way better business decision to constantly be trying new ideas. Like, the way that anime production works, I mean, they, they're develop like, the whole cycle of developing the show, like, runs right up to when the show is happening. You know, like, they're animating it as it's airing. And within a couple of episodes, you can look at the pre-order sales of the Blu-rays, and that gives you a good measure of how well your show's gonna do, and then you can look at the actual sales once they start selling, which usually the first disc is gonna be out by the end of the show. 
And so by the time the show's over, you've got a pretty good sense of is this going to sell or not? And if the answer is yes, if the the show like like Konosuba for instance, they made one season of it, it was only 10 episodes, but by the end of it, the show had been so successful that they announced the second season. Um, whereas if the show had not been successful, then at the end of those 10 episodes, they could just stop and move on to the next thing. So, yeah, it's definitely a way better uh, business decision to um, to constantly be switching it up. Uh, what anime instantly changes your mood? I guess I'd say any anime changes my mood because I just go into watching mode and uh, am not thinking so much about what's going on in my life. Unless it's a really boring show, in which case that's why I'm probably going to drop it. Uh, opinions on love triangles and white album 2 i'm not a fan of love triangles and especially not the way it's done in white album 2 because the problem with white album 2 is that it's a it's a show about and i i dropped that show like eight or nine episodes in because it's a show about three characters who have a really strong friendship with one another and, like, the joy of the show, kind of, is, like, watching them hang out and be friends. But then, inevitably, because two of the girls like the main guy, you know, he has to choose. And he has to start dating one of them. And it just causes all this drama and really just kind of makes the show fall apart and become boring and uh, and shitty. Because it's, like, now it's just about the heartache of choosing one over the other. And uh, I was much more invested in just watching them all be friends with each other. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe I just can't relate because I've never been in a love triangle scenario before. Nor could I see myself ending up in one. Like I don't know. If uh if I kind of liked a girl and then a different friend of mine started dating them, I'd just be like, "Oh well, I guess I I guess it I guess you're dating her, you know." Uh but maybe I've just never fallen in love. And that's why I don't get it. At least never fallen in love uh, that way. Uh, dislike the Chimera and Dark. Oh, it's the best. It's the best arc by far. First of all, did you watch it all at once or did you watch it week by week? Because if you watch it week by week, that's why you don't like it because that it, it feels like nothing's happening for a very long time. But if you watch it all at once, it, it flows perfectly and it all makes perfect sense. Um, it's just such, it's by far the, it's like the most interesting thing that's ever happened in any show to me is the Chimera Ant arc. Like nothing has ever been more interesting than that arc because it's all about, I mean, it's basically a study in, in, in chaos theory. It's about how, like when a bunch of random, like when a bunch of elements are just crammed into one scenario, how each and every action causes a certain reaction that changes the nature of everything going on. So like, you know, something that happens like, for instance, in one episode, Kilo is running down a hallway and this is kind of an infamous episode because like, this is the one with, that's the most bogged down in narration where it's like the whole episode is just about Kilo running down this hallway, seeing something he doesn't expect and then turning around. And the whole thing is about analyzing all of the ramifications of that action, like what it means, how the plans have changed because he saw this thing, you know, why he has to turn around, what it means for him to turn around and how this will affect everybody else. And that's what's so fascinating about it. Just the action of Kilua turning around has all these ramifications for everything else that's happening. It's fucking crazy. And the way that it, that it all like keeps playing off of each other and, uh, you know, remaining unpredictable and then leading up to these, uh, these insane conclusions of like these big crazy moments that, uh, that are some of the biggest, you know, pop moments in the show. It's incredible. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened in anime. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, are you familiar with the conditions Japanese animators go through? Of course. Do you think this lowers the quality of the industry in a whole, or it doesn't matter? Yeah, it definitely lowers the quality of the industry as a whole. I think it would be great if animators could get fucking paid for what they do, uh, which they barely do, and it's a fucking shame, and I wish there was more I could, uh, do about it, but hopefully with stuff like Trigger opening a Patreon, maybe some of that shit can be, uh, can be rectified. Uh... If you were forced to have a one-night stand with any anime or manga character, who would it be? I would probably pick Hermes from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. A one-night stand? Um, I guess, uh, I don't know. 
uh, any hot girl, <laughs> any, any of them, why, why, it, it, literally any hot girl anime character, um, uh, top 10 anime characters you want to punch in the face, Kirito, Ayato, uh, Oh, who are some anime characters I badly want to fucking hit? Uh, this is it doesn't help me to look around my room because I'm, all the posters I have up are of characters I like. So why would I want to punch any of them in the face? Um, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a person who typically hates characters. Like I've always found it strange when people like really violently hate a character from an anime because I've never been one to really look at them that way, and um like want like just want to kill some character for being uh for being annoying but you know i'd love to hit kirito do you have any problems with three gods and lions jarring comedy no i thought that's the best thing about the fucking show is the, the go watch my video about anime tone shifts that video pri should have been about three gods and lion like if i went back and remade that video after seeing the show it would have just been about that show because i think it does that so perfectly that like the, the whole point of the tone shifts is that the main character, the only reason, the only reason the show is ever sad is because the main character is in his own head thinking about all these dark thoughts and how like, oh, my, I'm, I'm such a shit and the world around me is shit and I'm, uh, I'm so sad. But then the second he's around other people, it's like those people aren't feeling that way. Those people are not indulging in his dark world. They're like having their own happy fun time and they're trying to drag him into it, you know? Like they literally, in like the first episode, the scene is like he's all sad and then they're like, boo! They just kind of explode out at him and he's like, oh god! And then they drag him in, they make him be happy, you know? And um, it's the coolest thing in the world. This is the best show. Uh, how much would we pay you to watch Death Parade? Uh, I don't know. Uh, how much are you willing to pay me to watch Death Parade? Uh, uh that already talked about. What is the appeal of Precure? Uh, really cute, sincere girls beating the shit out of monsters and being best friends. Um... Evangelion or Akira or Kill La Kill or Space Nanny, these are on my own. Hold list, which should I watch? All of them. Absolutely all of them. Dis disregard everything else on your on hold list and watch all those. How is Akira on hold? It's one movie. <laughs> or did you mean the manga by chance? Uh, what's the show you've seen the most times? FLCO. Fully Cooly. That's, uh, I've seen it probably 12 times. Uh, best girl in the world, world God only knows it's been way too long since I've watched it I can't remember any of the girls uh, what's an anime like Hibike Euphonium that actually goes through with the romance uh, you'd have to define like Hibike Euphonium um, Wandering Sun is kind of similar in tone and themes it doesn't go through with the romance by the end of the anime though or like I don't even know which romance I would say is meant to be gone through with, but it definitely goes through with the themes of like, uh, cause it's a show about gender identity and, um, and it's, you know, it's all about that. It doesn't, it's, uh, it's not pretending or anything. It's really a show about gender identity. So it's really good. Um, favorite anime director, Hiroyuki Imaishi, the director of Kill La Kill and Gurren Lagann and, um, Lulu Ko, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. He's the best. I mean, obviously, Gurren Lagann and Kill La Kill are both in my top ten favorite anime. Uh, so, you know, he's the only director with two shows in my top ten, that's for sure. Uh, is Your Lie in April and March Comes Like a Lion a new trope in anime? I don't know. I think San Gatsu no Lion came first. Uh, cause it's, that manga has been running for like almost 10 years, I think. Um, do you see psychopaths as a detective anime? You strongly voiced dislike of the detective genre and love for psycho. Don't remember dis saying I disliked the detective genre. I said, I've said, I don't like the mystery genre, but I think that's partly because my definition of mystery is inherently one that means a show is bad. Like, 
Like when when because whenever I say I don't like mysteries, people always point out a bunch of mystery shows I like. But then I clarify that I don't think of those as mysteries, or that the mystery is not the appeal to me. Because to me, mystery means like a show where that's like trying to drag you along by by hinting at something that there's like some something's gonna happen later, and you're just supposed to be like, oh, I wonder what it's gonna be. And I find no appeal in that. I like like Steins Gate. A lot of people would consider that a mystery show, but the mystery is not what's interesting about Steins Gate. The characters and the uh, you know the 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 ideas are what's interesting about that. So, um, but yeah, Psychopaths. I don't know. I don't know if I'd consider it a detective. It's definitely a police procedural. Um, like in the first half of the show. Uh, I don't know. Is detective even a genre? Like, I've never thought of that as a. I guess it is. I like Detective Conan, um, so why not? What's your favorite MILF in anime? Favorite MILF? Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of good MILFs in anime. I'd have to I'd have to really think about that one. Uh, could you elaborate on why you gave Clannad a five out of ten? And will you give it another try? Cause it's fucking boring. Clannad is boring and stupid. <laughs> I don't like it. Uh, I only finished it because I was watching it with my ex-girlfriend. She made me watch it. Um, favorite Dragon Ball Z fight? I don't know. It's been way too long. Have you read To You Immortal yet? No, never heard of it. Would you bother going through multiple medias just to understand a project fully? Yes, I did that with uh, Nanoha most recently. Read all the manga, watched all the anime. Uh, Would have gone through drama CDs, but I didn't find the translations at the time. Um... So yes, I mean if I was doing it for a, a show, I mean a, a an episode probably. Did you? I know this is more of a favor than a question, but could you wake up Ben and ask him what his favorite anime is? Bring the camera with you, by the way. Thanks. I won't wake up Ben, but I will tell you that his favorite anime, I think, oh he's he's not watched a lot. I know he likes Death Note. I know he likes. I mean Bakuman's his favorite manga, um, and One Piece. I don't know how much of the One Piece anime he's watched, but I know he's really into Bakuman and One Piece as far as manga go. There's some anime he likes. I don't know. I don't know if he could answer that question himself. I don't know if he'd be able to pick out a favorite. Oh, no. Actually, Fully Cooly. Yeah. His favorite anime is Fully Cooly. Um, he's a really big fan of that. And he's really upset about them making another season of it. Um... Thoughts on Gigix's new animation video of If Anime Series Are People. Does getting all the references in that video mean I have no life? Uh, I didn't watch it. I saw, like, a little clip of it, or I, I like, thumbed through it on our anime, and it seemed like it would probably annoy me, so I didn't, didn't watch the whole thing. Because, um, you know, boiling down studios to just... What, what I really love, like, rather than that video, there's this one image that's, like, a, like they drew characters that are like meant to be Kyoto anim like personifications of Kyoto animation shaft and Ghibli and I love them because they they just completely epitomize the feel of those studios in these character designs it's really cool um but uh so I was kind of disappointed when I saw that video and it wasn't like that like they just you know they drew like people that kind of have personalities that reflect those studios as opposed to character designs that look like those studios which is what that image uh, that I'm describing did uh, have you watched anything from the current airing season yet uh, not really other than the first episode of Masamune Kun Revenge I accidentally skipped ahead again thoughts on the etchy genre it can be fun if they if it shows not shit Anime that's gone on too long, uh, anything that's more than, like, 50 episodes has officially gone on too long. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, because I love Gintama, and it can go on forever, and I'll never be upset, though I'll also never finish it. No, I have not seen any of Kizumonogatari yet. You used your appeal in anime video for a research paper. Cool. Uh, what are Guy's favorite anime other than Gurren Lagann and Ghost in the Shell? Uh, welcome to the NHK. He watched that recently, and he considered it a 10 out of 10, so that's probably his number three after those two shows. I think those are the only things he considers a 10. Guy, Nate, rather, he's really, like, particular about media because, like, he, he basically doesn't see any value in something unless it's, like, a 10 out of 10. 
Like if it, if it's just okay, then he can't get into it. Like he for him, like a show has to offer him something, or it has to have some kind of special meaning, or like, or else like make his life better in some way, and like improve the way he thinks about the world. So that's why like his his anime review series is best anime ever because anything less than the best ever he's not going to bother with, you know, granted, sometimes it's a joke like monster Musume. He kind of did as like a, like a meme and uh one punch man. I don't think he considers like a 10, but you know, he's, and he didn't even uh, edit that one. He, he kind of did it as like a holdover video, but like, yeah, he's very particular about like what shows he'll actually talk about or care about. Um, and he does not watch a lot of random shows. Guy has seen very little anime compared to a lot of to, compared to most people who would bother making an anime channel. Um, Bebop Dandy or Samurai Champloo? Very hard question because I haven't seen Bebop in a long time. Um, I would definitely put both Bebop and Dandy above Sam Champ, just because Sam Champ has a lot of episodes that are not that good, and none of the episodes is like utterly amazing the way that episodes of uh bebop and dandy are like both of those shows have some of my favorite episodes of anime out there um but i think bebop probably has more consistently uh good episodes than space dandy does caution note youtube must be an up must be an update at 11 a.m the servers are available again at 12 p.m thanks for your understanding youtube team oh uh, good warning there i guess Uh, just a warning since it seems you haven't found an anime where the main characters are a mom and dad and they have a child KyoAni made Dragon Maid it's really good I did not know that the main characters were that in fact I'm not sure that that's even the case in that show um, or or is it just that like one of them has a kid I don't know I'll have to watch it It's, uh, it's uh, it looks like my kind of thing it's from the same creator as a uh, I can't understand what my husband is saying, which I absolutely love. Fuck, Mary kill, k -on characters. Well, I wouldn't kill any of them. Um, though if I have to, I guess I'll pick Mio. Uh, fuck would be Sumugi, and Mary would also be Sumugi. I fucked this up. Um, I forgot that two of them are positive. Uh, um, well, if I marry them, that means I get to fuck them all the time, right? So... I guess I'll marry, uh, I guess I'll, I'll marry Mugi and, uh, fuck Azusa. Why not? Um, uh, thoughts on Bakato Test? I wasn't that into it. Thoughts on Bobo? I haven't seen any, any of it in a long time. Uh, school days, I didn't finish it. Uh, god damn it. I can't, I hate this fucking chat. I hate the fact that it just scrolls down to the bottom when you get low. Um, getting hot using the monkey jones rule rick and morty seems to be going in a different direction in season three based on the season two finale how do you hope it'll turn out i don't know um i hope it'll be good that's not anime though so fuck the monkey jones rule best bromance in the industry and why is it ikuhara and sato miyazaki and ano is acceptable too i like how ano is in the wind rises what about ikuhara and ano why not just go right to that because those two uh, supposedly there's, I, I don't know if everyone's heard this story before or what, but there's a lot of rumor that Ikuhara was the inspiration for Kaoru from Evangelion because apparently at some point in the nineties, Ikuhara and Ano became good friends. For anyone who doesn't know, Ikuhara is the director of Revolutionary Girl Utena, um, uh, the later seasons of Sailor Moon and Mawaru Penguin Drum and Yuri Kuma Arashi. Ano, of course, is the director of Evangelion and, uh, and a bunch of other great stuff like Karikano. And they were good friends in the 90s. Ano did, like, some random animation for Sailor Moon at one point. And, uh, and, you know, him and Ikuhara were hanging out. And apparently there was some time that, like, they, they were in a hot spring, like a big open bath, and they were just sitting there talking for, like, hours on end. And, uh, like people brought up to Ikuhara like Ikuhara told that story when people told him that they thought Kaoru was based on him so I think it's possible that Ano has a big gay bromance boner for Ikuhara and that's why he wrote Kaoru the way that he is 
Um, cause Hikuhara is definitely, uh, you know, um, I don't know if he's gay, but he's quite flamboyant of a person. Um, I want to believe it. Therefore it's true. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, it's the, it's the greatest anime, uh, bromance for sure. What's your favorite anime that you would consider controversial by most? K-On! K-On's very controversial. Uh, thoughts on Tatsuya Oishi as a director? Favorite OP he's directed? I'm not sure exactly which OPs he's done, but I don't know my thoughts on Tatsuya Oishi yet because the only, he's only done fucking one show and one movie, and uh, and I can't yet tell you what things he actually did. A lot of people seem to think they can tell you what he did, but I'm gonna get to the fucking bottom of it with my with my fucking videos on Shaft. Um... Because I, I, I really think that everyone is understating the influence of every single other person at Shaft. I think all of them contribute to every show. I think Shinbo is still very much alive and still very much leaving his imprint on these shows. I think everyone else who works on him is as well. And, uh, and I gotta get to the bottom of it by just parsing out every single person's career and figuring out what they contribute to each show. Then I'll tell you what I think Tatsuya Oishi's like. Uh... Are you into anime English cover artists on YouTube? Like, no, I've never heard of it. What anime male character would you go gay for? Hmm. Well, some of them it would be easy because they're based like 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 any of the uh, any of the shotas from Natsume Yujincho, uh, or like um, that the the like half the characters in Yuri on Ice. I don't know. Uh, if I'm willing to go gay, then I might as well just go for all of them. Kizumoto is meant to be consumed as an introduction to the Monogatari franchise. That seems like a... That doesn't seem likely to me. Do you consider yourself a fan of specific genre of anime, shoujo, seinen, shonen, etc.? Those are not genres. Those are demographics. And, uh, no would be my answer to that. What do I think of Clamp? Card Captain Sakura is my favorite anime. I really love Card Captain Sakura. It's one of my favorites for sure. Um, would like to watch it again, but it's so fucking long. And uh, I've never been that into any of Clamp's other stuff, though. Like, I I grew up with the movie X 1999, and I really loved it as a kid because it's violent as fuck. Um, but, like, most of their stuff, like, their actual manga, I cannot get into because the artwork is just so, like, it's like almost incomprehensible because there's like there's very little backgrounds. It's always just like these these uh these the like gorgeous character designs, but with like nothing but flowers and white space in the background. And like when like I re I read a bunch of Subasa Reservoir Chronicle at one point or like three volumes or so, and like every action scene would just have so many lines everywhere that I just didn't even understand what was happening. Um, so I'm not a fan of their manga, but I, I think their character designs are good. But then the problem with their character designs is that they're really hard to adapt into anime. Where, like, Madhouse knows how to do it. They did it with Cardcaptor Sakura consistently well. But then you've, get, you've got, like, Code Geass, where they look different in, like, every episode. And then you've got uh, Ho XXX Holic, which was a fun show, but, like, the animation was all the fuck over the place. Subasa was all over the place. Like, I think their their character designs are just really hard to actually do well in animation, um, and therefore rarely have been done so. Uh, why does Wolf's feel like Final Fantasy VII to you? What? Wolf's Wolf's Reign? Wolf's Wolf's? What do you mean? Does Wolf's feel like Final Fantasy VII to you? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, thoughts on Yasuhiro Yoshiura and his works? I don't know who that is. Let's find out. Yasuhiro Yoshiura. Yasuhiro Yoshiura. Uh, looks like he... Oh, the guy who did Pale Cocoon. Uh, don't like his stuff that much. I Patema Inverted I thought was fucking awful. That movie, the, the full-length movie he did. I, I watched that and I thought it was really fucking bad. Um... Pale Cocoon and Mizu no Kotoba were like, okay, but, uh, yeah. Thoughts on Barefoot Gen? I have not watched it. Can you recommend an anime with a Yuri romance that anime that isn't trashy like Strawberry Panic? Uh, yeah. Simone, 
uh, is really good and has a lot of Yuri romance in it because, like, all the characters are girls. Um, that's probably my favorite Yuri anime. Uh, Revolutionary Girl Utena has some Yuri romance in it amongst, uh, amongst like, every kind of gender pairing imaginable. Uh, why do I, I always, like, look at my collection as though all anime is there. Like, I always just look over, like, hoping that answers are going to come out of the, out of these DVDs and just jump into my brain. Even though, like, all of this is ten-year-old crap that I, uh, that I haven't watched in forever. But, um, yeah, Simone's a good answer. Just go watch that. (laughs) Um, uh. Favorite anime soundtrack dot heck sign. Uh, for sure. What is the best mecha anime and why is it Grim Lagan? I agree, though I think a lot of mecha fans would be upset uh, at that notion. Because the thing about Grim Lagan is that it's very easy for non-mecha fans to get into, which is why it's the most popular mecha show. Not to say that mecha fans don't like it, but you know, a lot of mecha anime is really just for mecha fans. I still have not seen Paprika. I will get to it one day. Top three Ghost Lightning blog posts? I don't know, man. It's he's this blog's been dead for five years. It's hard for me to remember at this point. Um Did the reused footage in Utena ever get trite for you? No, because the fucking song, the Zetai Unme Mokushiroku, it's like the greatest insert song of all time. So I was always just really hyped for it. I would sing along to it every time. Have I watched Eureka 7 and did I enjoy it? Yes, it was my favorite anime for a while uh, back in 2008, and I haven't watched it in six or seven years, so. No, I did not collect all the anime in existence. My collection is mostly ancient. Uh, did I like the ending to Last Exile? I don't even remember the end. I don't remember Last Exile much at all. Anime with the most beautiful background art, Mushishi or Kishurn Sins, which are both art directed by uh, Yoshihiro Umakoshi, the guy who does the character designs for Kishurn Sins and Heart Catch Precure. And uh, is the base? those two shows are the basis of my avatars on my uh, channels. They're based around the color palettes of those two shows. Um, but yeah, probably Mushishi. If we're talking about TV anime. Actually, if we're talking about anime at all. Fuck it. Mushishi's got the best. Um, haven't been into anime for a long time. How would I go about getting back into it? As I feel like shows like Death Note and Gits are hard to come by these days. Well, I'm not even a big fan of Death Note. Uh, go watch Psychopaths or something. Any anime you dislike now, but you could be convinced on giving a second try? Um, uh, lots of shows from the past, like shows I disliked when I was younger, I'm always willing to give another try to. Stuff that I've recently disliked, I'm probably going to feel the same way about for a while. But I can be convinced about just about anything if, uh, you know, if, if you're if you're convincing enough. So you're a big fan of Char Eisenbaugh, how do you feel about Full Frontal's portrayal of Gundam Unicorn? I never finished Gundam Unicorn, so I don't know. Um, thoughts on Die Buster. It was cool as shit. Favorite girl from Girlish Number? Chitose. Chitose is best girl of all time. She's my favorite anime character, uh, right now. Uh, God, these are, I, like, how far ahead of myself did I get just now? Um, favorite animator other than Yutaka Nakamura? Imamura Ryo, the guy who does, like, all the best animations in Bakemonogatari is up there for sure. Um, what show isn't subbed that you wish was so you could watch it properly? I don't know if there's any uh, stuff I can think of that's left. Like, there's a lot of weird old Magical Girl shows that it would be nice if they were subbed. There's one... Um, oh, God, which one was it? Was it Creamy Mommy? It was one of the one of the fucking magical girl shows from the early '90s, or maybe it was late '80s. Uh, was like the OG Madoka twist because it's a show where the main character girl, in one episode, like 
like 30 fucking nine episodes into a 50 episode show or something like that. The main character gets hit by a fucking truck and dies. And then like her, like there was something to do with like her ghost or something like that. I don't know. It's like, like late into the show, the main character fucking dies. And, uh, there's a, there's an interesting blog post about it somewhere. Me and Davu talked about it in, I want to say it was either one of our commentaries for patrons or somewhere. I don't remember where we talked about it, but yeah, there's, there is a magical girl show in which the main character dies late into the show. And it's just like, it's just a kid's show. It's just a normal kid's show where this happens. And like, I'm always saying how I don't think, uh, Madoka was that like subversive because I think that there were plenty of darker or more like a, you know, deconstructive magical girl shows before that. And that's a perfect example of one, but it, it's, uh, as far as I know, it's never been subbed. So, uh, yeah, sub that show just so we can have that, <laughs> that moment in, uh, in, in English. Uh, how many animators do you know by name? All I know is Miyazaki. I, I mean, I could probably name like 20 if pressed. Like if you showed me a piece of their, like there's not a lot of animators that I could identify their work just by sight, except for like Yutaka Nakamura and uh, maybe Hironori Tanaka. Uh, Cause they've both done a lot, just so much fucking shit that it's easy. Um, and Ano, but only because I did a video about him where, where I used every single piece of animation he's ever done. So I can <laughs> easily, if I recognize one of those, I'm going to go, oh, that's an Ano cut. Um, but yeah, uh, there's plenty I could name, but, uh, you know, I probably couldn't just tell them by their work. Uh, why do you think Shaft animation is iconic as it is? Because I think they're doing stuff that uh, they're they're being inventive and doing new things and like... And all of it's, they're using lots of great, interesting ideas that everyone else should be using. I saw some criticisms. Some people were criticizing Sangatsu no Lion for being like too Shaft. Like they think the Shaftness is distracting. And I'm like, if anything, every other anime is not Shaft enough. Because what that show is doing is using really inventive ways to show these emotions. Like, it's not like they're just doing it for the sake of being Shaft. You know, it's not as though they're, uh... Like, it's not as though that show is just using Shaft tropes apropos of nothing. All of them are used in moments where they heighten the emotions of that particular moment. So, like, I think it's the perfect way to be using those Shaftisms. And I think, you know, I, it disappoints me that other studios aren't even trying to do stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah. What is a series such industry such anything that you will consume anything they shit out like a fat child? Um, is there any like that? Like I won't consume. I'm not gonna like. I mean, if if the if the other stuff if the other parts of it are dumb enough, I'm not even gonna bother. I don't think there's any like I'm thinking about all my favorite stuff like all my favorite shows and shit, and there's plenty of parts of all those that I have not consumed. You know, uh, I haven't even read the K on manga. Like the manga the show's based on, just because I like I read a little bit and I thought it was kind of shit, so I didn't bother with more of it. Um, so yeah, like I, I can't, I don't think there's any franchise I'm that attached to that I'll just consume all of it. A kind of Nanoha, just because I did a video series where I consumed all of Nanoha, and now I feel like I want to keep up with it out of like morbid curiosity, um, which has paid off because Vivid Strike was great, but uh, you know. You watched Dark of the Black first and second season. What about the OVA? I did not watch the second season, actually. I only saw the first episode, and I just didn't make it to the rest. Thoughts on Yoshiaki Kawajiri and his work? Ninja Scroll is my personal favorite. I know you're quite fond of it. Yeah, Ninja Scroll's great. Um, I don't really like his other stuff, though. I think Kawajiri strikes me as a very, like, style-over-substance kind of guy. You know, his movies are just about, like, badass dudes uh, fighting and... A lot of it's just, like, like I've seen, uh, I think it was Demon City Shinjuku, and that movie was fucking boring. Um, it was really stupid, and, like, it has a couple of really cool moments, and it's visually beautiful, but, like, nothing really goes on in it, and it's really dumb. Um, the Highlander movie sucks. I rewatched that for The Plebe and the Weeb, and uh, it was just, just kind of shit, especially because it just doesn't look that good. Like... It has Kawajiri's style, but, like, not... 
it doesn't have that classic look to it because they were it was like early digital animation and stuff and it it looks kind of awkward like they couldn't figure out how to do the colors well or something um Oh, and Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. I haven't seen that in like 15 years, but I remember it being fucking awesome. I definitely would like to. It's it's definitely the, like the the most beautiful movie that, like ever. Um like the most aesthetically gorgeous film, but um you know, uh but his other stuff, I don't know, I guess he's all over the place for me. It just depends on like how well they actually like how far they go on the production to bring that that intense visual style to life. Uh Name three fan service heavy shows. One that's tasteful, one that's trashy, and one that is just really hot. Huh. How can you have a tasteful fan service heavy show? Huh. Huh. Hmm. Well, one that's trashy, Seiko no Quasar, which I love. One that's just really hot, uh, Monogatari series, particularly Nisei Monogatari. One that's tasteful but heavy with fan service? How can you have such a thing? What is a tasteful, heavy fan service show? Uh. Uh, maybe like. I don't know, is Ghost in the Shell considered heavy with fan service? Uh, that's kind of tasteful, I guess. I don't know, isn't fan service by definition not tasteful? Like. Uh, it's a t- tough question. What do you think Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works did wrong that Fate Zero did right? Uh, just, the, I think, okay, I think that the Fate series is has an inherently stupid concept. Like, the whole idea of the battle between these seven people, like, the way it's presented is that they all need to like have certain amounts of knowledge of one another and that like they're they're kind of in hiding from each other but they're also trying to fight each other and it feels really arbitrary like when they do or don't fight like there's there's so many scenes where it's just like two characters just kind of end up in the same place they decide to fight and then they just end up not fighting or they they run away from each other for very arbitrary reasons and i'm always just sitting there like is it that hard for them to just come up and kill each other in their sleep? Like, they all seem to know where each other are. They all seem to have the information. So, like, to me, the whole the whole entire battle thing just feels so, like, weak and, and, and badly constructed. And, like, clearly the ideas behind it are, like, the interesting part. Like, how the magic works or, like, the idea that, you know, each servant has a certain set of powers and stuff. Um, but, like... I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not that interested in that. And what makes Fate Zero great is that it instead focuses most, like, the most interesting thing about Fate Zero is the ideologies of the characters. That every single one of them has a very distinct way of thinking and, like, how they think the world should be. Where, like, uh, each of the, you know, not only does each of the masters have, like, their own uh, specific worldview they're trying to promote, but also each of the servants does. And, like, the interplay between their different ideologies is what makes the show interesting, which is why the show is at its least interesting when it's doing something like presenting the entire backstory of uh, of Emia or whatever, um, as opposed to, you know, the interesting stuff, which is the character interactions. So, and the best scene is the Banquet of Kings, which is all just a clash of ideologies. So, to me, like... Fate Zero was just basically a show that took place in the Fate universe, but what's interesting about it is entirely Urobuchi Gen's writing style, which is to present clashes of ideology. That's what all his shows do. Um, whereas Fate itself is just an inherently stupid series that I don't care about. Uh, so that's that's what I think it did right. It was written by Urobuchi Gen. Um, any plans to revisit Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? I'm sure I will eventually. Thoughts on Kaiba? It's, it's, a, oh, it's okay. I think Kaiba, um, I feel like the first, the first few episodes are really neat and cool, but you kind of, and like, I wasn't sure what was going on at first. Like the, those first few episodes are like a little too esoteric. And then it gets into the midsection where each episode is like really interesting. And they all have like these wildly different like worlds and, uh, these really offbeat characters that you meet in like this this dark dystopic tone, 
Um, and that part of the show is really cool. But then the actual plot kicks in, and I felt like the plot itself was just kind of a generic uh, dystopia story and was a lot less interesting than, like, the random adventures had been up to that point. So, um, yeah, I wasn't as into the last stretch of the show. Yes, I like Gurren Lagann more than Ava. I think, uh, I think, uh, yeah, by, by quite a bit. Because Ava has too much, uh, too much bullshit in the later half. Too much just, like, like, weird, dumb stuff. Like, like the scene where when Asuka's, uh, getting mind probed and it just, like, replays the same three clips of her for two and a half minutes. Um, <laughs> because, like... Yeah, I don't know. I have, I have to rewatch Ava again. Hey, Shade's here. What's up, Shade? I'm live streaming again. Yeah, I saw. What's up? Do we have another PS4 controller? Uh, no, we only have one. Oh. Why, you thought we had two? Yeah. Trying to play a two-player game? What yeah. game? Someone say Chori. Oh. Uh, you want, you want to ask me an anime question? You want to answer an anime question? What's your come here? I'll do both. What's your what's your favorite anime? Somebody asked me that in the comments of your last one, and I didn't give them an answer. <laughs> get, why are you standing? Get get low. Get, get down into the into the camera. Can we hold on? Let me let me see if you're visible yet. I'm waiting for the stream to up. Wait, I can just look at the fucking open broadcaster. There we go. Uh, what's your favorite anime? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of answer is that? I know you 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 used to really like uh, Chunibyo and Kaon and Yuri Yuri and uh, and uh, Boku wa Tomodachi ga Sukunai. Um, is one of those your favorite? Do you have any? I know you like JoJo. Is JoJo? I mean, probably. Boku Tomodachi Gay Guy. Really? That's your favorite anime? I don't know. I enjoy it. You just really like Kashiwagi Sena that much? Like I mean it's it's a funny show. I know she's your uh your waifu, your number one waifu. Yeah, dude. Uh she's, all right. she's number one. Shade's favorite anime is Boku wa Tomodachi Gasukunai, a show that I dropped halfway through the first season. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Sardoz. Sardoz. Uh, so my question to you is, um, what is your favorite anime and why is it Zardoz? <laughs> my favorite anime is Zardoz. <laughs> uh, because, because the gun is good. The penis is evil. Uh, okay. Uh, favorite character uh, oh. Favorite character episode, season, movie, and opening theme of the Pokemon anime. Um, my favorite opening theme of the Pokemon anime is the first one. Uh, for the for the for the American version, the first opening, which is just an absolute classic, uh, and probably one of my top ten favorite openings. Period. For the Japanese series, the opening of Best Wishes was really fucking awesome. Uh, favorite character, uh, maybe Brock. He's consistently. I mean, I don't know. Pokemon characters are kind of awful. Episode, uh, hmm, favorite episode of Pokemon. I know I was, as a kid, I was really into the island of the giant Pokemon. And, um, the Haunter episode. I don't know, the whole original series, like, the whole, the whole first stretch, I watched, like, certain episodes dozens of times because I had them on VHS, and uh, as for in Best Wishes, which I watched later, uh, the episode with Scraggy where he beat like headbutts all the other Pokemon, it's hilarious. Um, season would probably be the original. Movie would be, uh, well, as a kid, Pokemon 2000 was my favorite movie for a really long time. So I'd probably have to go with Pokemon 2000 as my favorite movie. And Destiny Deoxys is great because it has Munchlax in it and it uh, makes him awesome. And then, um, yeah, I guess that answers all the questions. Surprised you didn't ask for my favorite Pokemon out of all that, but Munchlax is my favorite. 
Uh, would you recommend a 15 year old to watch Ava? Yes, absolutely. That is the ideal age to first watch Ava. The best way to watch Ava is to first watch it when you're like 14 or 15 and then to watch it again in your late twenties. Like, I mean, you could watch it a thousand times in between, but like, cause when you're, you want to watch it when you're Shinji's age, because you'll relate to Shinji or Asuka or Rei. Like, because they're all 14. You'll definitely relate to one of them if you watch it as a kid. And then if you watch it as an adult, you will definitely relate to either Misato or Ritsuko or someone. Um, so, yeah, both both are the best way to watch it. Uh, have you seen Do Da Da Da? Yes, I have a poster of it close to me somewhere. Right up. Right there. Do Da 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 poster. I watched all of it. It was good. The first season was the best, but all of it was entertaining. Um, what are your thoughts on Fate Grand Order, the first Order OVA special? That was the worst thing I've ever seen. I watched Fate Grand Order because I, I described this earlier. I don't know if you were, you were here earlier in the stream, but I was talking about how I was going to do this thing called Anime This Week, where I would just talk about like uh, like random stuff about certain shows that aired this week. And I had thought that Fate Grand Order was the first episode of a new show, uh, which was a mistake. So I watched the whole thing under that impression, even though within about 15 minutes, I was like, this is really bad and I shouldn't watch it. And it just kept getting worse. Um, but I thought it was absolutely abysmal and um, stupid and horrible. And I hated it. Ugh. <sighs> Thoughts on Nichijo? I'm like 11 episodes in. Oh, I accidentally skipped ahead again. Um, I just finished Madoka Magica. Any show like that? Depends on what you mean by like that. If you mean a show with that writing style, go watch other shows by Urobuchi Gen, like Psychopaths or um, Thunderbolt Fantasy or uh, or Fate Zero. But if you mean like another Magical Girl show that's kind of twisted... Uh, Princess Tutu, Revolutionary Girl Utena. Um, I don't know. You'd have to you'd have to clarify what you mean by like that. Uh, do you think Technolize ending makes up for its middle section? Yes. Definitely the middle section is the weakest part of Technolize, but the ending is fucking awesome. Um, in the middle of watching anime, do you ever assign a rating of 7 as you're watching it? If you do, how do you stop it since it gets in the way of enjoying the anime for what it is? I don't... I, I guess... I don't, I don't see how that gets in the way of enjoying it for what it is. I don't think I would, like, give an overall... Like, I often have moments where I'm like, if this keeps up like it is, then it will be this, you know? Like, as I was watching Girlish Number, I was, like, a few episodes in, and I was like, if this keeps being this good, this will be a 9, you know? And I felt that it maintained a 9 level throughout. Um... So, yes, I do think about that, but I don't think it affects it. Does Moe anime make you fap? Not really. Moe is adorable. It's not so much about the uh, the sex appeal. Does a show need relatable characters to be good, and if so, why? I don't know if it needs them, but it needs something for you to form a connection with. I think if a show is just completely alien and you don't get it, then you're just not going to care, you know? Now, I don't think an anime should bend bend over backwards to try to appeal to everybody. You know, certain people can relate to certain things and others can't. Um, now, if you're trying to reach a mass market, you might want to try to appeal to as many people as possible. But it uh, really depends on your goals. If you could combine two anime from different genres and that are not in your top ten, what animes would you combine? Uh... Uh, not from my top 10 because I was going to say Heart Catch Precure and Psychopaths which would create one of those two dream anime that I uh, that I ranted about um, what was the other one the other dream anime it was K-On mixed with noise music um, I don't know dumb question uh <laughs> I watched Ava the first time at fourteen, and yeah, I totally related to Shinji. Yeah, I know it's a uh, it's amazing how they how the, how that happens. Thoughts on Captain Harlock, Saint Seiya, and other fifty to one hundred ish episodes animes? Well, there's a reason I haven't watched those, and it's because they're fifty to one hundred ish episodes. Um, they're too fucking long. Thoughts on Fully Cooly? I I should definitely make a video about it sometime. 
uh, Shigurui, I have not seen. Um, I just saw something about Soto no Oto. Uh, what's so fantastic about Soto no Oto? Um, I honestly don't remember because it's been seven years, but I know I wrote some stuff about it on my anime blog, so you can search for that. Uh, how many times did you actually cry watching Sangatsu no Lion episodes 1 through 11? I don't think I ever actually shed a full-blown tear, but my eyes were tearied. Like I was I was I was misty-eyed through much of the show. Like f- like episode 3 I almost cried and then from then on I just kind of had like wet eyes for the entirety of it. Um Thoughts on Dean's track record last year compared to previous years. Man, Dean was on... Dean was fucking killing it last year. They really were. Konosuba was amazing. Rakugo was fucking really good. Uh, I think they probably... They, Sakamoto. Sakamoto. Like, three of my favorite shows of the year were by Studio Dean. And, I mean, I've always been a Dean defender because I think there's good things about the studio. I mean, yes, their animation quality is usually not the best. And obviously, this year, they, they made up for that. Uh, you know, uh, Konosuba and Rakugo were both great looking. Um, but while they may not do the best animation work, they have advantages such as they do long shows and they keep them running forever. Um, and they do shows that maybe wouldn't get done otherwise. You know, like, they pick up stuff and, and run with it for a long time, you know. Maybe we wouldn't have gotten, like, everyone complains about Log Horizon Season 2 not being as good as the first season, but at least we got Log Horizon Season 2, you know, like, it may have been a little worse, it might not have been as pretty, but at least we got it, and maybe we wouldn't have if Dean hadn't picked it up, you know. Um, they did, like, so, like, they did, you know, two 26 uh, 26-episode seasons of Higurashi and an OVA just to get as much of the fucking story done as they could. Um, and it's such a shame because so much of what they do is adaptations where people just complain, like, you know, oh, Higurashi didn't, or Umineko didn't have everything, and it's like, yeah, but the games are also, like, way too fucking long, and a lot of that detail is unnecessary, and it's good that they cut it out of the anime. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, I think, I think Dean, Dean has always been making good stuff, and they were amazing back in the fucking late 80s and early 90s, you know, they launched the whole career of, uh, Mamoru Oshii. Uh, you know, he did, I think they did Beautiful Dreamer, which was the Uru Seyatsura movie that he directed. They did Angel's Egg. They did fucking all of Ranma One Half. They did, uh, Rironi Kenshin Suiokuhen, the OVA that everybody loves. So yeah, Dean has, Dean has historically done lots of good shit. And, um, they were really killing it last year though. Full thoughts on Summer Wars. I will probably eventually talk about it when I rewatch it. Worst Gen Urobuchi show. I'm not sure. I haven't finished uh I haven't finished Gargantia or Thunderbolt Fantasy, and I haven't watched any of Common Rider Gaim. Uh so I don't know. I'd have to watch all of them to completion before I could really answer that. Oh, probably Blast Rider, just because Blast Rider is so ugly that I can't watch it. That was his first show, and like I watched the first episode and I really want to watch it because it's a Butch Gen show, and I've heard it has a lot of his hallmarks, but like Oh my god, it's so fucking ugly. It is the ugliest show ever. Um, Favorite OP and ED? I definitely answered OP at least earlier. My favorite ED is the K-On ones. K-On has all the best fucking EDs. Uh, Thoughts on Razafon and whether it's a ripoff of Ava. Razafon's fine. Um, I don't think it's a ripoff of Ava, but it definitely has a lot of the same... It has a lot of the same motifs, but it also has some of the same people worked on it. Ooh, and uh, and I think it borrows from a lot of Mecha. Like it, it, much like Ava before it, it borrows a lot from Mecha history. I have a video on my on this channel on After Dark about Pacific Rim and influences that I did like years ago, where I basically talk at length about how like so many people accuse stuff of being ripoffs when it's actually just. Um, either a pastiche of different influences or literally the same people worked on it. And, um, and how like, you know, anime history and, and the history of these genres is so much deeper than people realize where, you know, Ava pays tons of homage to like the entire history of mecha anime with its, one of its biggest influences being Ideon. Uh, and you know, the end of Evangelion is very similar to the end of, uh, the Be Invoked movie, the second Ideon film. So you know, it's all a it's all a legacy. It's a rich tapestry of influences. 
Who's your favorite anime sociopath? Probably uh, Isaiah from Do Da Da Da. Um, do you like Yojo Senki? I haven't seen it. Uh, greatest underdog story in anime? I don't know. I'm not into underdog stories that much. Thoughts on anyone pictures doing a fate anime? Oh God, they deserve it. Fate, fate deserves to be dragged down on the A1 Pictures sinking ship. I hope it's a sinking ship. I, I don't know. No confirmation about that. Mm. Best color palette on a show. Um, hold on. I'll be right back. I got to pee. But I'll get back to you in a second. Play the Jeopardy music. Okay, so I'm a really big fan of the color palettes of Kishurn Sins and Hardcatch Precure, which is why I made my After Dark, um, my, my, my Digibro and After Dark avatars are based on those. But there's, there's one show, and I, I mentioned this in the last, um, I mentioned this in the last live stream because I was asked a similar question. But I want to make sure I get it right this time and tell you exactly, here we go. There's, a, there's an OVA from 1991 called Lika-chan Fushigi na Maho no Ring. It's an, it's, a, it's an OVA that's tied in, there's this, this doll, a type of doll called a Lika-chan doll, which I guess is like a really popular doll in Japan that had like a bunch of anime made out of it. And uh, one of the straight to video releases was Fushigi na Maho no Ring. And I watched it, and I just really loved the color palette of it. Like, it has the super, like, vapor wavy aesthetic that I fucking adore. And um, it was just super neat. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure I named it correctly. Because there's, there's more than one Lika Chan OVA, so I had to get the right one. Um, the other ones, as far as I know, aren't as good. Uh, favorite Monogatari Lolly? That would be Shinobu, for sure. Um, what shows would you recommend to a person who loves psychopaths? Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, uh, Fate Zero. Um, let me think. Yeah, those are the two. Those are the two biggest ones. Make sure you watch those two. I guess. I don't like giving people too many recommendations because then I feel like you're just gonna get bogged down and not watching all of them. I'd rather like. You know, recommend you stuff one at a time, and you can come back and uh, get more later or something. Um, build the worst, most incompatible all-star team of good writers, directors, composers, animators, and actors you can. The worst combination um, <laughs> of good writers. Of good writers. All right, Sato Dai as the director... Uh, no, no, no. What's his name? No, Sato Junichi. Junichi Sato as the director. Um, the guy who, who directs, like, all the Magical Girl shows and all the, uh, all the Slice of Life Iyashike shows. Pair him with Urobuchi Gen as the writer. Um, the composer will be... Alright, Urobuchi Gen's writing it. And Juni Jun Junichi Sato's directing. And the composer... The composer will be, um, the composer will be, uh, the guy who did the Gurren Lagann soundtrack, Taku Iwasaki. Um, the animators, 
the entire animation staff is going to be animated entirely by oh who do I want to make this fucking show <laughs> uh, sorry this is taking so long I'm really thinking about it it'll be animated by JC no not JC staff because they've they've done plenty of Junichi Sato shows well, it's, who's a studio that's just totally unfit for this I guess uh, Gainax current Gainax current era Gainax yeah so it'll be it'll be Junichi Sato directing written by Urobuchi Gen composed by Ta Taku Iwasaki animated by Gainax and the uh, the saving grace of the show is that every character will be voiced by Norio Wakamoto and that's my that's my ultimate all-star team of good good writer director composer animator and actors uh, but the show will be total dog shit a uh, manga that desperately needs an anime adaptation I don't know I don't know if any manga desperately needs an anime adaptation you know most of my favorite manga are stuff that are good as manga that like that 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 wouldn't translate as well into anime like because I, I I inevitably am gonna prefer anime to manga. Like I just it's a medium that I that that inherently appeals to me more. I like having you know things in motion. I like watching a show. I like the sound to be there. Um, but with mo like most of my favorite manga are stuff that wouldn't make good anime adaptations. Or if they have, then they're very incomplete or couldn't be done again. You know. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't feel like there's any manga I desperately want to be an anime. What do I think about the headshot in Idion? Uh, I'm not sure which which. I assume you're talking about. I mean, I haven't seen it be invoked. I've only seen the death reel. I remember someone getting shot in the head with a fucking rocket launcher. It was awesome. Uh, have you heard of Nippon Animation? If so, what do you think of them? Uh, I'm not sure. Should I watch the Fate series? Uh, no, you should watch Fate Zero, but none of the rest. I mean, I mean, you probably should because most people like it. I'm just a fucking guy who doesn't like things. So, do you plan to do a full series analysis of Science Gate after Science Gate Zero is completed? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. What's your favorite story or character arc in any anime? Huh. I guess a uh, Kaon's arc of uh, Yui and and all the girls becoming friends. <laughs> That's like the whole show. Um, best visually designed character. That's a whole fucking. That's a whole can of worms you're trying to open there. I'd have to spend like I'd have to spend weeks, uh, you know, comparing and contrasting. My my quick answer, I guess, I'll go with Ryuko from Kill La Kill. She is an extremely striking design that I really like. Um, all right, I'm gonna. I'm only gonna answer a couple more questions and then wrap this up. I'm trying to keep this to two hours. Trying to be restrained here. Uh, how much from one to ten are you of a man child? Considering you spend all your time watching. Uh, absolutely, I'm one hundred percent man child. That's all I do is watch cartoons for children. I don't know. Define man child because I do live on my own and pay for all my own shit. So, if Gyoani and Shaft and Trigger were to vanish, who do you think would push the industry forward? Um. I don't know. I think it'll be new studios. I think, like, I mean, you know, Trigger's brand new, and there's a new studio that's formed out of, like, old Ghibli staff who's putting out a movie this year that looks like a Ghibli movie, you know? There's, there's, uh, Kara and shit. Like, I think, I think all the new studios that branch out for the old one, from the old ones are always going to be the ones that push things forward. Um... Everyone's saying how they could hear me peeing. I'm still way behind the chat. All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna answer a couple more. Have I seen Mad Bull 34? Yes, Mad Bull is fucking awesome. We watched it for the kicks for the for the plebe and the weeb, and uh, for Kickstarter backers who pay twenty dollars or more, you can watch it along with us. We watched it as a whole group, the whole fucking PCP, all watching Mad Bull and losing our fucking shit. It was awesome. Uh highly encourage watching mad bull in a setting of like a bunch of dude bros who are all drunk that's the best way to watch it um what are some concepts you don't see in anime that you would like to see more more just like adult stuff more like 
I don't know. Like I don't I don't necessarily want to see more like politics or anything like that, but just just older characters, more sexually active characters would definitely be nice. Um just like I don't know. A scale of 1 to 100, where would you put girlish number at 90 because that's what a 9 out of 10 is. Which shows you feel represent the depression in an accurate or interesting way other than high bonnet Renme. Uh, welcome to the NHK. Uh, pretty, pretty fucking accurate representation of depression. Uh, Watamote. Um, I don't know if that's depression so much as just social awkwardness, but NHK is a pretty fucking stark look at depression. Th uh, Sangatsu no Lion, which is currently airing, very well handles the, uh, the depression of the main character. Um, so yeah, those are just a few examples. If TPC was an anime, what studio would animate or write it? Who would direct it? And who would have to do the Japanese dub? Um, I don't know who I'd pick as the Japanese dub actors. I hope I get to be voiced by Tomokazu Sugita. That would be nice. But uh, but his voice is definitely deeper than mine. Um, what studio would animate it would be uh, probably Trigger. I mean, how else are you going to capture the madcap mannequin? No, it would, it would, it would be Shaft. It would be... Uh, I mean, the TPC, all we do is sit around and talk. So it would basically be like Panty Pony Dash. Just, like, recreate Panty Pony Dash and, uh, and you have the Procrastinator's anime. Uh, recommendations for someone who loved K-On? Um, any of my other favorite anime. I don't know. It depends on what you liked about K-On. Do you think making four girls main characters in Hibikei Euphonium was forced? I do. I think that show tried to, like, look like a four girls show at first, and then it actually wasn't one, and it was weird. Um, I don't know why they did that, because the other two girls are so much less prominent in the story. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. That's it. That's it. I'm going to end this live stream now uh, so I don't go on for fucking four hours like I am prone to do. Thanks for coming out, everybody. I'll uh, see you in the next one, whenever such a thing may be. Bye!